Hey guys, uh, welcome in. I have obviously not made a video in like two years. I'm still just as bad at camera as I was before, maybe even worse. Um, I did make a chaga latte too, uh, but I enjoyed it through the last couple takes of me going off on a rambling tangent and now I'm hydrating. So I did make some bullet points here, so hopefully I don't get off track. I know I won't get through everything that I wanna talk about, but that's why I have another video as well coming out next week, kind of diving deeper into the uh, foods, the soil food web and talking with a graduate student that actually studies plants. So I wanna go over like prairies, mycorrhizal effects, like what fibaceae do for the soil, that type of thing. But today I wanna to touch on my last video uh, that I made about the lion's mane tincture, which got a lot of love and I super appreciate that. I just did a video based on other people's stuff, but doing it with things that you can actually use at home. And I'm so happy that it helped people. I was shocked. I'm not in school. I'm a full-time parks worker. So I do like maintenance and stuff for the parks. I mow, chainsaw, clean it up, and then that, pretty much takes up all my time. I used to grow mushrooms. I do have a better setup now. It's got mylar lining. It has vac fan, lighting, uh, and then a humidity control. But I do live in this tiny little apartment. So it's temporary, but until I move, I'm probably not gonna grow anymore. Most of my mushrooms are coming from wild foraging. Uh, so the results from my lion's mane tincture turned out pretty like I was pretty happy with them. Uh, it went from anything like I didn't feel anything at all to I took like a shot even though he said not to. And then I also got one that uh, somebody that came up to me and asked if it helped with schizophrenia. And I said, I don't claim it, but it's super cool that they said that it seemed to be helping them. There's lots of studies on it. You can look into it. Super fun, very happy about that. I did make little stickers. I'm not in good at like animation software, but uh, I just printed them off with marker, or I printed them off and drew it with marker and took a picture of it. Um, and then I'll put like, it's called Foraging Health. It's not legalized or anything. I don't have a business. So if you want to steal it, you could. I'm never going to make money off of this purely passion project. So yeah, I wanted to get into kind of talking about microremediation, different pathogenic uh, organisms because I have been listening to podcast after podcast at work. I find it really fascinating because I love fungi. I'm passionate about fungi, so I wanted to learn about where they reside and it was really hard for me to apply um, that knowledge if all I care about are the fruiting bodies and medicinal effects of what they provide for us uh, in like these big fruiting body forms. So I was able to connect more with fungi when I was learning the phylums and looking into podcasts that talk about like microremediation. So for example, I really like the, like what Tess Brzezinski did in Chicago or Detroit, Detroit, Michigan. She does a lot of things with bioremediation. And one thing that really stuck to me was her research on wood rot fungi. They are able to break down aromatic molecules, which lignin is made up of aromatic molecules, which is very hard to break down. And we also find that a lot of uh, toxins from products of incomplete combustion are made up of polycyclic aromatic molecules, which are ringed molecules that wood rot fungus can break down. So they are able to clean up uh, like oil spills and uh, burning garbage, like the pollutants that come from that, even from like burning cigarettes. That's super fun. And then I was able to also learn more about glomera mycota, which I tried learning about last year, but didn't really have anything to apply it to. They are very good for the soil. They have something called arbuscular fungus, which excretes glomalin, and that's a protein that is able to be a really good carbon storage and structure for the soil. It keeps in nutrients and disperses them as needed and sticks around a lot for a long time, even after the fungus is gone. So what's super cool about fungus is they digest things extracellularly, so outside of their bodies, which is super cool. They absorb nutrients through their cell walls and they create mycorrhizal relationships with plants and they give and take and some just decompose. 
uh, it's just such a fun world and they're very necessary to our survival and being super into nutrition I also wanted to know more about um, how the fungi like just help us survive and then I'm also very much into nature because I'm an avid hiker rock climber I appreciate nature every day I love being outside and so what are we doing to our environment when we're using pesticides and herbicides and stuff so i've been religiously listening to teaming with microbes with jeff Lorenfels, and then also looking at things that uh dr elaine ingham has put out and i just find them very fascinating very truthful i really like the truth and getting to the bottom of things and i really think what they're speaking is the truth so i'm here to spread more awareness about soil and using organic uh, growing methods because when we're destroying the soil it takes a long time for it to come back so at the end of the video I want to talk about a pathogenic organism that I've been obsessed with called Oomycetes which is a stromenopile and I have just been so fascinated by it and looking into like what are we doing about it and it doesn't look very good on our end we tend to treat a lot of weeds and mites with pesticides and fungicides because it's a very fast and easy temporary solution but in the long run we are destroying so many of our microbes and i care a lot about fungus and now i care a lot about their neighbors too so i want to go over just like the basics of nitrogen fixation and how the microbes help the soil stay healthy you have things like bacteria and fungi that break down organic matter uh, that could be anything from like grass clippings to leaves falling which is why it's super important to keep those in your you know lawns and in the forests they break that down they make it into food for the plants the plants exudates to give to entice the fungus and bacteria they eat those exudates it also attracts protozoa like cilia flagellates and uh, you know those types nematodes or not nematodes amoebas nematodes come in as well and there's so many critters living there that just they're living in harmony in this little uh, soil food web and it's really important that we keep it nourished and healthy because then we avoid diseases and weeds and stuff that affect us and our well, then we don't have to spend so much in the American healthcare system so a lot of these pesticidal companies have been uh, advertising and almost like attacking us for years and years and it all ties into the big pharma and just things that like it attacks our bodies our microflora in our gut it's really important that we're eating vegetables that are organically grown because we need more than just those nitrogen phosphorus we and potassium we need all of these micronutrients that we're not paying any attention to so I know a lot of people they just think like oh gosh why should i care you should care because it's your health first of all your body is your vehicle and second of all it's actually a lot easier once you get into organic growing you're not going to have as many weeds and you're not going to have as many pathogens you when you fill it up with good bacteria and you give them the oxygen and the 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 nutrients that they actually need and not chemical nutrients because when you're pouring these uh water solutions that are from like miracle grow or something you're actually cutting off the connection with the mycorrhizal fungi and the plant that's really important that you don't do that because they're actually providing a lot of micronutrients and in a consistent manner than you would be able to by feeding them chemically so even just using things like if you want to boost your plants i know kelp is a really good thing because they have like phytohormones and you can use organic matter uh, organic compost so that these micronutrients are able to flourish and do exactly what they need to do and i know a lot of people are like oh gosh i'm just going to do it the same way i've always been doing it but we didn't know a lot about these bacteria and microbes until recent history for example rhizofacy bacteria that sit around the rhizosphere we didn't know exactly what they did we discovered them in 2010 and they actually create the little hairs on the roots on a plants which causes the plant to be able to take in more nutrients. So when it entices this little rhizofacy to come in through the rhizosphere and it strips it of its cell walls, it's able to get a bunch of nutrients from that and it spits it back out, creating these little hairs on the ends of roots. So 
we didn't know and then it comes back and does it all over again and it's this really beautiful cycle so like dr elaine ingham talks about is just how simple it is if we just let them do their thing if you look into it it's very complex but we don't need to you know calculate all these things because nature will do it for us nature has given us so many signs and stuff that when it's not happy with us which it really has been lately um uh, books like Braiding Sweetgrass are really important. Learning about indigenous cultures are really important because they actually are very, they have a lot of vital information to give us about just connecting with the land. And it, it is super important. It's not just, it's not a conspiracy. It's not some, I don't know, I, I live in small towns, so I feel like a lot of people, they don't take this very seriously. And it, it's just, it's very true. It's very... Um, the more I look into it, the more I realize, gosh, yeah, Mother Nature doesn't need us, but we should be taking care of her. And if we don't, we could disappear, you know? That's why I love Elaine Ingham. I love, uh, you know, Jeff Laurenfels. So I started looking into, like, pathogenic organisms and why they form and what we're doing about them. We're obviously killing them with more pesticides and herbicides and whatnot. A lot of colleges aren't are teaching it that way due to the fact um, that, that that's how we've always been teaching it and it would really suck if your whole teaching career was a lie so it's really good that, like people like Dr. Elaine Ingham they come in and they're like hey you're wrong I don't care what you say about me this is you know we need the truth it, it, put your ego aside we need the truth because we need to save our soil uh, so I've been looking into something called oh my CDs uh, and they are very scary. They caused the Irish famine in 1845. They killed, it killed tons of people through starvation alone. They've destroyed entire species of fish, entire species of trees. They can just wipe everything out. They really mock the way that fungus work, but they're not fungi. They use something called horizontal gene transfer through evolution is what we theorize. And they're able to excrete a lot of the same proteins that break down and destroy uh, plants and living creatures they are filamentous they sporulate and yeah they're just they are destructive little things they're also known as water molds we can avoid them by having healthy soils and by promoting uh, microbe food rather than chemically chemical substances uh, yeah so it just how do we prevent these things rather than how do we kill them off and then when we have them how can we uh, almost just fight them with with healthy microbes rather than just killing them because we did find uh, i know we use like flupiclide to kill them a lot of times and in uw madison they're finding that it does affect other bacteria and fungus despite what google is telling us um it grows back but it takes a long time for old, you know, like good bacteria and all that stuff to grow and to form. That's why when you till, you're constantly setting the soil back and you're actually gonna get more weeds because there's no microbiome. A lot of bad mites and weeds, they love that just early soil, uh, possibly dirt and like things like, you know, pebbles and silt. It is good for your soil because you have things like lichen and other creatures that love to, you know, break that down and turn it into nutrients for the soil. There's this whole web that we're not focusing on. And I really wanted to talk about that and just kind of have like a chit chat. Please put in the comments uh, things that you know and have learned. I want to talk about like, how can you get more involved and how can you involve friends and family? Just through like activities, even as simple as, I go through and I find these Ganoderma amplanatum, which are, you know, shelf fungi. They, they're they're mush, shelf mushrooms and they sporulate, you know, that way. They make great ways to make art for your friends that are super into that. You carry them through the forest, don't touch the white part. When you get home, you can toothpick little designs in them. They dry, they're made out of like woody substances and they don't rot. So that's super... I found it to be a super easy way for people to be like, oh wow, you can paint on them. Uh, anybody who's creative that you know, you can get them into that sort of stuff just through, I don't know, fungus, they're just so amazing. I just love them so much. And they do so many things for us. They even, I mean, it's just the world is 
your oyster. You know, the forest is your oyster. Oyster mushrooms are your oyster. So getting people involved through that, just going on hikes with people and pointing things out, uh, just getting them involved in nature, telling them fun facts. I know fun fact, birds, they are able to spread protozoa through just hopping on the soil and the protozoa sit on their talons and that just absorbs into the soil and birds are so cool, I love birds. So I feed the birds at work all the time and they land on me and I just love looking at them and studying how cute they are because <laughs> there's a cute study involved in that and yeah so in the next video i know there's a lot i didn't get to talk about like nitrogenase i wanted to talk about stress on plants endo and ectotrophic fungi but we will talk about that in the next video when i'm more scripted and talking with somebody else that can actually keep me on track I feel so grateful for all the loved ones that have supported me in this and if I didn't say this already at the beginning, if I said something wrong, please correct me. If you have something to add, please add it. I just love talking about this stuff and hope to see you in the future. Yeah, cool.